And in episode eight, you finally find out that he actually did die. It finally happened. Yep. Word gets the queen and Allison wants to keep it a secret as long as she possibly can. He tells those that are close to her, like Otto. But that last conversation that she had with Viserys, somehow she interpreted it as she's supposed to make Aegon the king. It was his, quote, dying wish. And it seems like she actually believes that. They then hold an emergency meeting of the king's council. And it turns out most of the council was already planning on this happening anyway. If the king were to die, they were going to enact a plan where Aegon was to take over, not Rhaenyra. And when Allison finds out about this, she's pretty pissed off. Especially because it seems like it was Otto's doing. Another person who isn't happy is Lord Lyman. He's more pissed off about the fact that they're just acting like Rhaenyra wasn't promised the throne. He also finds it very fishy that the king, quote, changed his mind in front of Allison and only Allison. And he starts putting up a fight about this, but he ends up getting killed by Sir Criston. Sir Harold tries to fire him on the spot. After all, Sir Harold is in charge of the king's guard, but the queen tells everybody to just put their swords away and calm down. They then start talking about what they're going to do about Rhaenyra, and Otto says we have to get rid of her. We can't have somebody out there with a claim to the throne. And Allison doesn't want this at all. She wants to give Rhaenyra a chance to bend the knee. She, however, doesn't give this order. And when Otto tells Sir Harold to go take dragons and be quick, Sir Harold throws his stuff down, saying, I take orders from the king, and only the king. And until there is a king, I'm not taking orders from anybody. The meeting then disperses, and a few people start looking for Aegon. The queen and Otto Hightower. The thing is, Aegon is nowhere to be found. He's not in the castle, and somehow he's snuck out into the city. Otto finds two knights named Eric and Eric. They're twin brothers. And he instructs them to go into the city, find Aegon, and bring him back only to Otto Hightower, not even the queen. Sir Criston finds out about this, and he lets the queen know. So the queen, in turn, ends up sending Criston and Amond into the city. So you've got these two groups that are looking for Aegon, and it's really a race against time. While these two groups go to work, Otto brings everybody together who bent the knee 20 years ago in Oath of Rhaenyra, and he tells them the new plan, that Aegon is to take over and they're supposed to bend the knee to Aegon. Just about everybody does. There's only a few people that stand up and don't bend the knee, and there's only a few of those who end up putting up a vocal fight about this. Those people end up getting killed. And the one guy who hadn't bent the knee yet and also hadn't said a word ends up finally bending the knee. But at the first chance he gets, he also tries to flee the city and probably tell Rhaenyra, and he ends up getting caught by Lord Laris. He ends up ratting him out to Otto, and that poor guy ends up getting killed as well. Otto mentions to Laris that he's noticed that Laris and the Queen have been spending a lot of time together. And Laris tells him, well, there's no reason why what we discuss can't help you too. Laris, being the ultimate snake, is trying to double dip and play both ends to his advantage. So Otto and Laris have a private conversation. The queen, meanwhile, was tending to her husband's remains and also tending to his sister. Rhaenys hasn't been let out of her room. She's been locked up. And when the queen finally goes and addresses her, Rhaenys is pretty pissed off about this. But the queen explains that the king is dead and his last dying wish was to have Aegon take the throne over. She's come to Rhaenys that day to really curry favor. She wants Rhaenys on her side. She makes her pitch to Rhaenys and even offers her Driftmark. She also admits to Rhaenys that Rhaenys should have been queen years ago. It shouldn't have been Viserys, but unfortunately, that's the way it went. And Rhaenys looks at Alicent and says, Come on, not even a little part of you wants to be queen? You don't want to take up the Iron Throne? And Allison is kind of speechless at this. She doesn't know what to say. And she just tells Rainey's, when you have an answer for me, ring the bell. And then she leaves, locking Rainey's back up in her room. Now, in the city, both groups were hard at work trying to find Aegon. Eric and Eric ended up going to a child fight club, where it turns out Aegon spends a lot of time there. And maybe it's because he has a vested interest. They look over in a corner, and one of Aegon's bastard sons is just chilling. But at this child fight club, they're approached by somebody who wants to talk to the Hand of the King. Her name is the White Worm, and she reassures both twin brothers that she knows where Aegon is. So they send word to Otto, and a little while later, he ventures into the city and he meets with the White Worm. 
And it turns out it's Masseria. As Masseria and Otto are talking, the whole conversation, though, is being watched from a distance by Amon and Kristen. They figure if they just follow this group, they'll find Aegon. Sure enough, it works because Masseria tells Otto that she wants the child fight clubs to stop. The gold cloaks have turned an eye to it for years, and it's got to come to an end. And he reassures her that he'll look into it, and that's when she gives a location of Aegon. Twin brothers go and find him, and he's drunk and has zero interest in taking over the throne. But when they drag him out of the temple that he was in, there's Kristen and Amon waiting to intercept. Eric and Kristen get into a sword fight, and when Aegon takes off running, Aemond jumps on him. In the end, the team of Kristen and Amon end up winning out, taking control of Aegon and taking him back to the queen. But this isn't before Aegon made a real pitch to his brother to just let him go, get on a boat, and leave. Never to be seen again. He really, really doesn't want to be king. And Amon really, really does. So he definitely entertains the idea. But ultimately, they bring Aegon back to the queen. Now with Aegon firmly in her custody, Alicent goes and talks to Otto because she's not happy. Otto tries to explain to her that they're fighting the same battle. They're on the same side. But she says, no, we're not. I finally see that now. I'm a pawn in your little game that you've always been moving. They then start fighting about the fact that Otto wants to kill Rhaenyra and that's not Alicent's wish at all. And with Aegon in her custody, she now calls the shots. So she tells her father, here's how this is going to play out. We're going to send terms to Rhaenyra on Dragonstone and wait for her response. Kristen will be sworn in as commander of the King's Guard. And the next day at dawn, Aegon will be sworn in as the new king and all of King's Landing will be there to witness it. She walks out of this meeting with her father and goes to her room, but she's not alone. Lord Laris was there waiting for her. Turns out, Lord Laris has some information for her. But he also has a foot fetish, which is ironic because the guy has a club foot. But we don't kink shame on this YouTube channel. In order to give this information, though, he makes Alicent show him her feet. And the information he has is the fact that there's a spy ring in her castle. In fact, one of the spies is her lady-in-waiting, named Talia. The thing is, Otto knew about this. He kept the spy ring in line because he figured it could benefit him at times. And it has. As long as the spy ring is still there, Allison's secrets are never going to be secrets. So the best way to handle this is take out the head of the snake. Figure that that's probably the white worm. Allison gives the okay to Laris to get it done, and then she pulls out her feet and lets him touch himself to her Edgar Allan toes. After he finishes, he does seem to make good on this promise because the next day there's a fire that he probably had something to do with. But the next day is also the day where Aegon is to be sworn in. And Rhaenys has yet to give an answer to Alicent, and she's still locked up. But not for long, because when Eric finds out that Rhaenys is locked up, he finds it treasonous, and he wants to sneak her out of the city. The thing is, all she's focused on is getting back to her dragon, but Eric explains, there's no time to go to the dragon pit. We've got to get you to shore, get you on a boat, and get you out of here. Unfortunately, they get swept up in the crowd that is going back to the kingdom to watch Aegon be sworn in as the new king. And they have no choice. They've got to follow the crowd. So in front of all of King's Landing, a very bitter Aegon is sworn in. Although when he gets the crown on his head and he gets the sword and he feels the power, he starts to come around to the idea. But Rhaenys decided to use this distraction to her advantage and sneak down to the dragon pit. And shortly after Aegon is sworn in, Rhaenys and her dragon burst through the floor, sending terror throughout most of the people there. And this includes Alicent, Aegon, everybody else who was involved in the ceremony, but they're frozen still. Rhaenys, sitting on her dragon, her dragon staring at them, they figure that they're about to die. But instead of yelling Dracarys, the dragon just screams at them, sending the fear of God into them. And then Rainey's turns around and flies away. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.